Hi guys, Nada here and in today's video I'm going to talk about this 32 inch 4K OLED monitor from ASUS, the ProArt PA32DC. Now this is not a monitor you would get for gaming. This is actually a professional tool that is made for designers, for filmmakers, for video editors and pretty much all kinds of content creators that are after that white color gamut, that perfect color accuracy, uh, that perfect HDR and just a perfect all around image reproduction. And it also comes with a bunch of cool features and a bunch of different settings and options that are specifically made to make your work easier. So let's check it out. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The PA32DC is a 31.5 inch OLED monitor with a 3840 by 2160 resolution, which is a sweet spot for editing in my opinion. It is large enough without being too extreme and you get a very sharp image with 140 pixels per inch and lots of effective workspace. And keep in mind, OLED panels in this size are actually extremely rare. Uh, most OLEDs uh, start at 42 inches and then go bigger than that or you find them in laptops and in phones, but there are actually very few in between. Uh, there is one model from LG that I know about, the 32EP950, but that is pretty much it. Since ASUS doesn't make their own panels, they use a panel that is made by a Japanese manufacturer, JOLED, uh, which is actually a joint company between Sony and Panasonic. And the panel itself is a bit different than the panels you see in typical OLED TVs. Uh, it is a pure RGB OLED, which means that it has a regular RGB pixel layout, while typical OLED TVs use an extra white pixel in their layout to boost the brightness. And while these white OLED panels are completely fine for a TV, the true RGB OLEDs are better suited for color accuracy and even more so for professional monitors like this one. As you can see, Asus also went with a very functional design with simple lines and thick bezels all around and they included two completely different stands. So you can use the typical Pro Art stand that is ergonomic, that is height adjustable with tilt and rotation functions as well as some basic cable management. Uh, it is a metal construction on the inside but it does have a plastic layer over it so it might not look as premium as I would like but it is extremely sturdy and it's actually perfect for desk use. You can also mount it on two compact feet uh, which makes it very portable especially in combination with the handle that is on the back of the monitor. Or if you prefer, you can skip the stance completely and they surmount it instead. Uh, they also call it the first OLED monitor with auto calibration uh, because of uh, this little thing on top. Uh, the panel does come calibrated right out of the factory, but to uh, keep the color accuracy on point over a long period of time, you do need to kind of keep calibrating it every once in a while. So they added uh, this fully motorized colorimeter that just flips into place when you need to calibrate your screen. Uh, it also saves all the color profiles on an internal chip on the monitor itself, so you can easily move it between systems and still have all your set profiles, which I think is pretty neat. Now the OSD is controlled with a little joystick and some physical buttons uh, that are nested on the front of the bottom bezel. It doesn't look as elegant as having the buttons on the back, but it is much easier to work with as you can see them clearly. And the OSD itself is very decent and pretty fast and of course it is full of additional presets, additional tuning options, HDR features and all kinds of extras that are specifically aimed at productivity. The connections are again easily accessible rather than being hidden underneath. On the left side you get a Type-C input with a 65 watt power delivery along with four USB ports and on the other side you get a display port and three HDMI 2.0 connections. 
Now this is a 60 Hertz monitor, so at first glance, HDMI 2.1 doesn't seem necessary, but it is also a true 10-bit panel with HDR support that can technically require more bandwidth than HDMI 2.0 can offer. So if you want the full 10-bit HDR 60 Hertz combo, please do use the display port instead. Uh, there's also a headphone jack in the back and there are two basic speakers built in, but they don't really sound so great. So uh, you can use them occasionally, but I strongly recommend uh, using a proper speaker set or some proper headphones instead. But let's check that RGB OLED panel. In SDR mode, the brightness hits 559 nits, which is a bit more than the 500 nit claim in the spec sheet and a really good, well above average result. It is not as bright as some VA options or some mini LED panels, but it is realistically more than most people will ever need. Uh, now, since OLED panels use much more power to display a full white image than a black one, uh, there is an automatic brightness limiter built in, and it does behave a bit better than on regular OLED TVs, but it's still something that you will notice when you set more than half of your display to show white, which can be really annoying in desktop use. Now, you can avoid it by enabling the uniform brightness setting in the OSD, but that just limits the maximum brightness to 300 nits, so the ABL doesn't kind of need to kick in at all. So it does help and it fixes the problem a bit, but there is a clear downside that the marketing team just didn't think to mention on their product page, so do keep that in mind. Now, minimum brightness is excellent and better than on any other monitor I've tested recently, but the color is where this monitor just shines. It has a very wide color gamut, and while it's not the widest gamut I've tested so far, it does get close enough to 100% in both Adobe RGB and DCI-P3, so you can work in either color space depending on your needs, of course. Now, factory calibration is also excellent and they offer a ton of different profiles that you can use. I didn't really test every single one of them, but the core ones uh, show a near perfect calibration. Now, I don't really like that they disable brightness control when you are in the sRGB mode, but you can adjust brightness in other modes, including the Rec 709, which is almost identical to the sRGB mode. And of course, you have a handy calibration tool that is built in. So if you have any specific wishes, it only takes a couple of minutes to make your own profiles or to recalibrate the default ones. Uniformity usually isn't an issue with OLED panels, but it is really close to perfect on this unit that I got, uh, showing the best result of any other monitor I've tested so far. Now, those small differences I measured are basically irrelevant and you'll never actually see them in use. So on average, this is as good as it gets. Viewing angles are perfect as well, uh, both horizontally and vertically. And since this is an OLED panel, backlight bleed isn't something you should worry about, and it also means that you get an infinite perfect contrast. So you get this amazing picture quality with lots of colors and with those deep blacks as long as you use it in a dark or a dimly lit room, because if you use this monitor in a medium to a very light room, it does get a little bit more complicated. Now, this isn't a super glossy reflective panel like typical OLED TVs have, but it also doesn't have that matte coating like IPS monitors have. So it kind of sits somewhere in between and reflection can still be an issue depending on your setup, of course. Uh, so if a lot of light hits the panel directly, those perfect blacks can look pretty gray instead, which kind of ruins the whole concept of that infinite contrast. Now you can use the included hood to lessen the light reaching your screen, uh, but the best thing to do is to just make sure that the room that you will work in is not too bright. That's it. Since this RGB OLED panel doesn't have that extra wide pixel in its layout, uh, switching to HDR mode doesn't really make it go brighter. Uh, the HDR image is very consistent when it comes to color and when it comes to brightness tracking uh, that is done really well, which does give it a perfect image pretty much, but it doesn't offer those 
extra bright peaks that you get from OLEDs, from QD OLEDs or mini LED alternatives. And keep in mind, this is still going to be one of the nicest looking HDR images you can get in terms of color and in terms of accuracy. And it is still very bright, it just doesn't have those super bright peaks. Now, I personally don't really mind that at all, but if you buy this to create HDR content because it offers so many options and features to specifically create HDR content, you should be able to see the end result and how it will look on other OLEDs too. Uh, what it offers in colors, it lacks in speed and the input lag was pretty significant. And while it kind of makes sense because it is only a 60 Hertz panel and monitors uh, that offer a lot of image processing are always slower, it really is a lot. Now, OLED does offer instant pixel response times, which means that aside from that input lag, uh, movement does look really smooth and there's no ghosting, there's no overshoot and moving images look as good as the static ones. I cannot really show you the full response time chart as this monitor has that typical OLED flicker that tends to um, confuse the response time testing tool. Uh, they dip very briefly on the refresh cycle before showing the correct value again. And this panel does that too, plus it adds a second slightly less strong dip halfway. Now this does happen really fast, so uh, for the majority of users this will not be an issue, but there is still a very small group of people that finds OLED panels uncomfortable because of this issue and this panel will do the same. So if you are fine with OLED TVs, you're gonna be fine with this monitor too. OLED panels are usually very power hungry, but this one ended up using around 44 watts on average, which is not bad at all. Uh, it will vary a bit, of course, depending on how bright your content is, but it typically goes between 22 and 49 watts, which is not that different from regular monitors. In a full white HDR image, it goes up to around 80 watts, which is more, but still not excessive. Uh, the great thing about all this is that it doesn't need active cooling, so there is no fans you need to worry about, and there is no extra noise you need to worry about either. I don't really know what the price in the US will be, or any other country for that matter, uh, but here in the EU, or in the Netherlands to be more precise, uh, this monitor will cost you 3,500 euros. And that is a lot of money, but I also expected it to be even higher since LG costs about the same, while Asus here added a lot of fairly expensive features. But even if you had uh, infinite money to spend, uh, this is not a monitor to buy for a regular user. Uh, you can get a much cheaper OLED panel that will offer uh, lower latency, high refresh rates, and higher peak brightness in HDR mode, and that will make so much more sense for gaming, for watching movies or series, or for just doing regular work. Or you can even get an OLED TV plus a 32 inch IPS monitor and still have more than a thousand euros left over. So this PA32DC is a professional tool uh, with a very focused feature set and it will only make sense for professionals that need those specific features for their work. So if you're looking for a monitor for content creation specifically, uh, this RGB OLED will be better than OLED TVs with the extra white subpixels, as well as uh, the QD OLED alternatives that also come uh, with their own challenges, uh, especially for the level of content creation that ASUS is going with this one. So if what I went over today fits your line of work and you want to invest in a very good monitor or you want to spend some company budget on it, uh, this is definitely something to look into. Now, this is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one. Bye.